Good morning to you from my car. How many of you have seen the film The Incredible Journey? I believe it's two dogs and a cat. And uh, I think the, the story goes something around um, the family that owned them are moving house. And I think they're going f across America from one state to another. And uh, the animals somehow get left behind. Uh, maybe you'll correct me on the plot. But they need to get back home again. Or they need to find the home that they've, uh, they've moved to with their, their master and mistress. So they have this trek across America and they have all kinds of adventures. And uh, the homing instinct is what comes to mind this morning. And uh, it's no better illustrated, not just in dogs and cats, but eventually, of course, these dogs, this, these dogs and cats actually do find their way home. Amazingly, it's a true story as they cross America. But uh, this homing instinct is, is found very much in the pigeon. And the other day I was watching a documentary about pigeons. And I didn't know any of this stuff at all. I just knew that there was such thing as a homing pigeon. But apparently in the UK alone, something like 200,000 pigeons were used during the wars to send messages back to um, base camp, as it were, in order to maybe send troop reinforcements or supplies or something like that. And uh, this homing instinct is amazing, especially in the homing pigeon. It seems to know in its heart and mind where to go. Apparently uh, they're trained in a certain place and their loft is in a certain place. And then they're sent out, could be anywhere across, across the world or within a within range of a few hundred miles anyway. And um, these pigeons have messages tied to their, um, I think usually to their foot. And then they go across and then they're sent out and they arrive back in their loft, because they only know the loft is the place that they have to return to. And uh, the messages are delivered, and it's, it's amazing. I thought about this, and I thought about us as Christians. What is our homing instinct? Do we have the homing instinct for heaven? And I just thought up uh, three or four scriptures here I want to share with you about that. Hebrews thirteen fourteen, And it says this. I think we're all familiar with it. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Sometimes the Bible is just full of one-liners, isn't it? I've mentioned that before. One-liner statements. We know that um, that's the way God often speaks. Sometimes he speaks to us through a whole paragraph or through a whole chapter or through a whole story but in this instance we are seeking that city to come there's a homing instinct inside us when you were born again you know i'm talking to you if you are already a christian but um there's that desire isn't there to be home with the lord and that's also brought out in corinthians paul brings it out in 2 corinthians 5 verse 8 that to be home with the Lord is to be absent from the body, and absent from the body is to be home with the Lord. And um, that homing instinct is something that is in, it's inbuilt inside us, especially now, as these times get darker. So we know our home is where God dwells. And um, again, Philippians 3.20. These are just encouraging scriptures I want to share with you this morning. Philippians 3.20 says this. In the KJV, which I think is slightly not so clear, to be honest, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, I'm going to read from uh, another translation on that one, Philippians 3.20. And I, I think this speaks to me more personally. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Saviour from there the Lord Jesus Christ. It goes on actually in verse 21, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies that we will be like his glorious body. Transformations in war took place because these pigeons were sent out and they delivered their message home and from then they were able to um, help the troops 
that we're in some sort of dire need or distress. And it's the same, excuse me, it's the same with prayer. Prayer is exactly the same. Good old water. Prayer gives us that homing instinct. And when we pray, we're praying to the place where God dwells. We're praying to the place where our citizenship is in heaven. We're on the home stretch. Revelation 21, 13. Sorry, Revelation 21, 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. The dwelling place of heaven, the homing instinct God has put within us since we've become Christians, that homing instinct. He tells us too in, in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And when the pigeon is sent out to take that message, he goes to um, take it to those that are going to be able to help those that sent the pigeon out and so that they can prepare whatever they need to prepare for those that are in distress. We're in distress down here at the moment, aren't we? We're suffering because this isn't our real home. Our real home is with God. Yes, Jesus is returning. Yes, he's going to make his kingdom on earth. He's going to dwell with us and then that will be our heavenly home because we will be with him in the place where he is. And God can't wait for the day that that happens. I know that because it says that we eagerly await and I'm sure that he too eagerly awaits that time. But of course endurance has to take place, patience has to take place in the meantime. But what about you this morning that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm often urged in my messages to, to speak about that. This channel isn't really, to be honest, a, a channel where I, I evangelize every time I speak. But I think there are times when uh, God wants me to do that. And I want to say to you today, do you have that homing instinct? Do you have a sense that you're not where you should be? that there's something missing in your life, that you're adrift. You're adrift in a sea that you can just see nothing across the horizon. Jesus is the place where you will find your home. Jesus is the one to come to. He is the saviour that we eagerly await. And if you've never come to him, that is my urging to you today, in order to gain that homing pigeon instinct, so that you too can be on that home stretch on the way to heaven. What does it take? It takes a repentant heart. It means to turn back from your sin. Not just in words, not just saying a prayer, oh Lord I do this and then done and dusted, I thank you Lord you've forgiven me. That's the start. That's only the start. To come to God in prayer. To come to God in all honesty and to say Lord I don't have that homing instinct. I don't have the sense that you are my father. And I've always been adrift. I'm adrift in my sin at the moment. But I need you to forgive me and to cleanse me by your precious blood that I can come into your kingdom, that my spirit will find that homing instinct and come to you. And when you do that and you're born again, it's like the pigeon. I don't know how it works. Uh, there are theories, I believe, some sort of a, a satellite navigation system that the pigeon has, um, something built into its brain. But it knows where home is. And that's the important thing, to know where your home is. And it's, often we hear that saying, home is where the heart is. And especially when you're a child. I can remember days when I would have long walks home from school in summer days and I would pass by all the houses and see other children going into them. I think, well, I've got a, still got a long way to walk and I'm hungry and thirsty. But I know that eventually I'll get home and I'll have relief. And my mother will be there to greet me. 
And that's the wondrous thing, isn't it? The prodigal son felt the same thing when he saw his father's open arms. He didn't know he was going to be greeted so much, so wonderfully. And we too, we don't realise how wonderfully we're going to be greeted when, when we eventually get home, when we find our citizenship in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. So I just commit that word to you today. In my Father's house and many mansions, he's prepared a place for you. Remember that as we go through these hard days. And be blessed.